What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. Sitting all the way across the city from me this week and every week, he's King Ball VR, King himself, King himself, Captain King. Yes, and, and sitting as far west coast as possible, three hours away, is Creeper Betty. Yay! <laughs> Betty, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fabulous. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Betty's, uh, Betty is an awesome, awesome member of our community and, and a fantastic, loyal, creative game cat who's also very, very well known in the Rec Room community for creating really custom rooms for things like uh, Nathie's birthday, the Game Cat Meetup, uh, all sorts yep. of, um, nice. is it the, the PSVR chat show? You you, uh, you, and I think Justin Credible team up yep. and, and create those rooms together? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very creative. Yep, and then just, in fact, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, Valentine's Day and I actually made a cupcake that looks just like one of the cupcakes I made in Rec Room. <laughs> I had to show that. Life imitates <laughs> I was <quite> impressed. art. <laughs> oh, yeah. And every week on Why We Love PlayStation VR, we dip into the PSVR archive. We pull out a game at random. We dust the ball off it. We play the crap out of it. We see if it's been given any love by developers, any updates, any DLC. Then we let you know the loyal game cats. There we go. If it's worth your time. Uh, <laughs> Creeper <laughs> Betty, what game did we decide to play this week? Swordsmen. That's right. Swordsman. Sword Swordsmen. Yep. Swords people VR. No women. Sword, sword yeah, right? Swords person. <laughs> We're gonna have to talk to Alec about that. Where are all the sword women? Uh Swordsman VR by Sin Studio released September twenty fifth, two thousand twenty for nineteen ninety nine. Uh Jeremy, what kind of game is Swordsman VR? Like a battle arena fighting sword sim. It's like gun club, except with swords and shields and axes. Right. Now, guys, I've been on record uh, on, on Without Parole talking about this game pretty much ad nauseum. And I'm going to say something right here and now to kind of preface like where I'm coming from for the rest of this review. I loaded wow. my save game where my character was at 100%. Uh, and so <gasps> I went in, I checked out some of the new updates and stuff, and I kicked some major ass. So you're going to see some footage here where it's like I'm not playing very tactically. And so that's why I need to hear mm. from you guys how you had to play because you were starting from scratch. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so walk me through it. You start the game. What happens? Okay, so, well, I'm not at 100%. I'm only at 48%. And the first time I played it, like last week, it totally kicked my butt because I wasn't being tactical at all. <laughs> I was just going in there flailing swords all around and stuff, you know? It's and kind of a fun way to play it, though, right? Yeah. Right, right. And then, um, and then the update came out, and I said, okay, I'm going to really do this. You know, I've watched a few other gameplays, and so I'm going to really do this. So I was parrying, and, and, um, and it kicked my ass. Yeah. I, I, it's hard. It really, really yeah. is hard. It's harder to, at least to me, it was harder. They don't, I mean, they don't tell you much. You know what I mean? You're just kind of there. You walk around. It's pretty bare bones. Almost reminded me of like Dark Age of Camelot, you know, that M old MMO. So then I get into the arena and I'm doing the whole Muppet dance. I, like I have zero time. I'm like, just, you know, like, <laughs> like and just taking them out. Yeah. They're like getting chopped up. Like they're like, oh, I just crumbling underneath me. And I'm like, this is fucking easy yeah. until. <laughs> I lost a round and then I lost another round, another one, another. And I was just starting to get like bullshit. Like there was nothing I could do. So I'm like, I, I want to go do the waves or the, the survival mode or the horde mode or whatever the fuck. So I go in and I jump in there and the same thing's happening. I mean, these zombies are coming at me and they just taking me out. And, and so I rage quit my first experience. I'm like, yeah, I'm done. Nope. And I win. I turn you off because I'm a human and you know, you're a game. So then I had that whole feeling, like a victory. And then, uh, so I needed to go back and play it because I knew we were covering it this week, so I had to go back in. And I go back into it. After watching some gameplay of people playing it, hmm. and I'm like, these people are having a blast. Why can't I have a blast with this title? So I'm like, I right. see what they're doing. They have finesse. They have style. They're waiting. They're <laughs> you know? not so, Muppets. Yeah, they're not Muppets. Let me go in there and actually act like I'm fighting these dudes. Right. So I get in there and I, I start right. approaching it. I'm like, cling, cling. I'm like, huh, huh. And I'm doing the whole thing. And I'm like, all right. And I, I'm starting to enjoy it. And I started going out and leveling up with the, the skill points and trying to sink points into that. that uh, what is it? Was it intelligence that gains you more experience early on as you level oh, yeah. up? So I'm like, I'm going to mm -hmm. say points into that so I can gain more experience, so I can level up more. And and then I started going in and hitting with a little more power, being a little, make, little bit more victorious. Then I put the 
armor physics thingy on. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it was like clank, clank. I, it, was, it kicked my ass. I, maybe I should have prefaced this by saying uh, that the most recent update for Swordsman VR did add the armor physics update where uh, armor is no longer just cosmetic. It's actually these physics-based colliders where if you hit somebody's armor with your sword, it bounces off, it ricochets off. Oh, yeah. just, you know, so, uh, and so that really has added a whole new level of difficulty to, to the game where the whole thing is supposed to be more like a, you know, they, they keep saying it's more like a dance now, uh, kind of how the game was always supposed to be played. You actually said a few things uh, that I kind of want to jump back to and, and and talk a little bit more about. You said you said you went back and you were really getting into it. And I feel like this is kind of a game that you get more out of it the more you put into it. You're not going to yeah. jump into this game and it's going to be like, here you go. You're in VR. Now you feel like a swordsman. You have to like act like a swordsman. You have to kind of like crouch and like be like kind of like light on your feet and ready to kind of bounce back and forth and ready to parry and ready to really do what needs to be done. Yeah. Right, because if, if you do this, it's like you might you might get few past a few levels, but it's like not fun. For if you immerse yourself into it, then I feel like the game immerses you back. If that makes mm -hmm. any sense at all, like you feel yeah. good if, when you get into the role. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I definitely. agree. And and doing this, I would get tangled up, and then I would go back, and then my arm is stretching because it's all yeah. like twisted underneath their arm or something, and then you know. Yeah. Yeah. There's no Edward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, right. Definitely got to be tactical. It, it, so yeah, the, so uh, use the tactics. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the framework here is is pretty simple, right? There's, uh, I believe there's five different locations. Yeah. And so if you're playing the core game, there's nine stages in each one and the mm -hmm. boss battle. What did you think of the arenas? When I first stepped into the whole game, I was like, the, the music and the graphics for me were great. So um, I like the great halls. Um, let's see. I'm going to say my favorite, though, is going to be, is it Jorvik? Where the Vikings in the snow? Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very Skyrim. Because they look, yes, yeah, very Skyrim. And I'm like, that's your brother. You know, that's your <laughs> uncle. You know, and <laughs> like stabbing them you know because they all look related and everything but um <laughs> yeah i i like i like the vikings that one was one of my favorites um i'm i'm up to level eight on that one so i would do one like do a few in in one realm and then i go to another realm and do a few because i'm gaining coins right right and it was and at that time it, i want more I want more armor. I want better swords, you know, those kind of things and be more powerful. And then I'll go back to five and above. Mm -hmm. So right. that's, that's how I was playing. It, it's a smart way to do it. It's absolutely, yeah. it's like kind of tackle the easier levels of each one and then be able to build your character up. Cause yeah, every time you finish a battle, you get coins where you can buy what armor, uh, swords and Shields. thank you. <laughs> and then uh and then skill points where you can yeah. actually level your character up and i love skill points man i love skill yeah. points anytime you go here's your base character and you just kind of plug away and like keep like adding it's like it, it's it's so rpg like rpg elements made their way into every single kind of game and right. now and now you can you know make yourself more powerful so your swing does more damage i love that maybe it's because i i rage quit my first time <laughs> that going back in i was a little bit overly critical maybe i don't know because, like, so going in graphically, I think they're okay. You know, like, it didn't wow me. I, I got to admit, I didn't feel surrounded. Like, I didn't feel VR-ish. It, it felt like the, the backgrounds were old Street Fighter type of static backgrounds. Like, even the camels in certain areas and the horses, they don't move. They're just there. And there's nobody watching. There's no, like, why are we here? I know it's, they say story-driven battles, but I don't recall the story. I didn't know why I was there or what I was doing. Like, I wish there was like crowds or people like, you know, right beyond the barricades that are like, Ugh, or whatever I might agree. happen. Just a little bit more liveliness. You, you want, know, you want it to be pit, less street fighter and more pit fighter. A little bit. Yeah. Where there's a reason why we're fighting that. I mean, things were barricaded, you know, so obviously they put us in here for a reason. Yeah. And there's like Rrr, the trumpet every goddamn time. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> like, I wanted to know what that, you know, all of the, I, I wanted more immersion to feel like I was actually fighting this dude for some whatever reason. But yep. just having the blank arena, it just felt real static, like cruising USA or just something real uh, 
old school, you know what I mean? Where it, it, it was like a, a re rewind in time of like how VR games used to be, you know, not to say it was bad. It's just, it, it felt bare bones in yeah. that department. Same with like, I like how they disguised the hub, if you will, uh, of selecting a mission and upgrading as a room to walk around in instead of it just being menus. Right. So I like that. But then you just yeah. jump into a, a pretty stagnant arena and it didn't they varied a little bit, but they you got over it. The first initial like, oh, OK, I'm in the sands now or OK, I'm in an outside snowy courtyard area, you know, and, and then that was it. It was yeah. rinse and repeat. So I found the environments to be a little boring and the visuals, even on a PS5, they were a little bit blurry. They so weren't tight. I'm going to guess that you didn't turn off the anti-aliasing. Probably be not. Because that's oh. when this game launched, there were two types of aliasing you could have. And I asked mm -hmm. him, is there an option to turn it off? And eventually he added an option to turn it off completely, which gives it a much sharper look. I, I, I you know, and I'm, I'm with you on that. Like, um, I, I just feel like there should be a little bit more um, to the surrounding areas. Maybe on each level, like the one, two, three, four, you know, all the way to 10, um, change the scenery, but keep it in the same place, you know? It just feels like I need to go and buy potions and talk to people and do quests. Yeah. I mean, it's just that's how it feels when I get in there in, in, in that main room, in the late main lobby room where you do all your leveling up. And then that's yeah. so grandioso, and you're right. And then you just go into this room, and you're in the, that same room for 10 rounds. It's like... It could be more like just, Thunderdome, where on accident, if you're fighting and you're near somebody, you could kill one of the audience members. They'd be like, oh. Right. You know? <laughs> or yeah. something, you know? Or yeah. Just just something. It would... Um, but yeah, I, that's what I was thinking, because I feel like I need to go on an adventure. And I know they tried changing things up, because they gave you the horde mode, where it's like you're, you know, got the zombies encroaching from various areas of this uh village at night but again it was empty that you could travel around more into like rooms but they were just empty rooms nobody was around and these zombies were pretty slow play uh paced getting in there and then once they were in there they could kind of move at you uh, so what we're talking about right now is the november 1st addition to this game which was the horde mode that they added uh and it really did change things up significantly like the arena suddenly became like this town and the and, and the zombies were coming in from outside the town. Like this is kind of what I want more of in the actual game. And they're I love that they're experimenting with something different, saying, Yeah, you know, here here's a place you can go in the buildings, you can hide behind the bar, you can go up the stairs, you can kind of like parade all of the zombies down a hallway. I mean, there's lots of different tactical ways you can approach this. But once I get to wave eleven, I'm pretty much dead no matter what I do. Um, <laughs> but this is this is what's this is the craziest thing about this game is that um, the horde mode was an addition. It was something they were like, let's experiment with this and see what the deal is. And it's, I wish the whole game was more like the horde mode. Yeah. Um, oh, and, yep. And exactly. Then, <laughs> right? And then yes, we start going down that road. Do. And then I'm like, well, let me tell you what else I want in the horde mode. <laughs> like, I, I, I want potions. I want to find, I want different swords to unlock at different waves, you know, I, like, or I want to be forced to explore the town to find yeah. different items that will help keep me alive for further and further waves. Um, and, I, and this is what I want the whole game to be because I feel like the core yeah. game is a little too basic. This is more advanced, but as a full-fledged game, it's too basic. So yeah, right. it's weird to see something. They could incorporate some of that uh, Call of Duty zombie thing. Like you could even border up areas to, to protect from zombies coming in, you know, see, in you're between. Talking. Yeah, you know, <laughs> right. yeah. that would be fun. Did you log in on Valentine's Day? Today was Valentine's Day. Yeah. I totally logged in today. What yeah. Happened? Did yeah. you not read what it said? It, it, it said uh, it, it gave you a little um, it said happy Valentine's Day. It says you beautiful creature. And then it gave me 420 gold and 69 experience point points. I, I didn't get that. That's so <laughs> weird. 420 gold, 69 <laughs> experience points. 420, 69. <laughs> It was nice. awesome. I was. I just laughed. It was keep, great. Keep it classy, Sin. Keep it classy. <laughs> yeah. No, I got none of that. Holy shit. Right. Yeah. yeah. You didn't get that. Mm -mm. No. But but I will oh. say I will say they're really good about updating this on holidays. Like there was a uh, on October seventh, they uh, they kind of decorated the entire 
lobby area with with like jack o lanterns and stuff like that, and there was like nice. s- cobwebs, and there was even uh, this is even when they updated it with a new cursed axe, a uh, new weapon, and so they keep adding new weapons and new shields and stuff to unlock. I cursed axe. H- how did that go for you? It was pretty nasty. You got to be like, what was it, five strength plus or something like that to yield it properly. I do love uh, since we're just talking about weapons. I do want to say that I love the. Uh, boss weapons as soon as you beat the boss then those weapons unlock in the store and those have special powers like you can you can shoot lightning out of one of the swords and another one will heal you and another one will uh erupt the ground almost like an earthquake and, and, and kill all the guys in your vicinity i love that you get to be the boss when wielding the right. boss swords i love that i feel like that's the way that this game can be endlessly playable keep adding bosses and let me like Get those powers. It's like the Mega Man thing, right? Kill the yeah. boss, get his power. Awesome. Move. Yeah. And what I hate is that on December 29th, there was this limited time seasonal event only. Uh, it was you You fought Santa Claus. <laughs> it, it, they, called, they called him Claus. He was like kind of like a demon-like Claus. Um, and I didn't – He had. he's at his own stage. Mm. He, had his, he, he had his own weapon. And I – didn't beat him during that time because I forgot to get back into it when it was happening. And now it's, it's shut down. You can't even access that boss fight right now. And so I'm like, man, I hope he opens it back up. I mean, I don't know if we're going to have to wait till Christmas again, (laughs) but like, like did you, did you stream that one? I didn't. AJ streamed it and it's, it is cool. Okay. I'll I'll tell you that this, I talked about, you know, we talked about the, uh, the arenas being kind of just like, one rectangle that looks different than the last rectangle looks and there's no traps there's no like you know environmental hazards that kind of thing but in this one you're fighting on top of a glacier and and at certain points pieces of the glacier just start falling off so the arena becomes smaller and smaller very oh. much like a battle royale style thing but it's still you know yeah. oh it's pretty crazy see why can't they put that into some of the other ones in the other realms i mean right i i, think... I, I just a little bit of that would would be helpful exactly you know but all i just keep thinking is i just count the gold count the experience just build that up so i can go buy stuff that's what i just keep looking forward to yeah absolutely it's a it's a nice little mm-hmm. gameplay loop for sure mm-hmm. yeah all right man i think we've talked yeah. about this game enough jerry what's our rating scale one, got to buy it, buy it now, pay extra, give a good tip because you'll fucking love it. You'll love it. Get it now. Two, hold off. Give it a Valentine's Day uh, wish list type of a thing for next year. Maybe somebody will buy it for you and you don't have to spend your fucking money. <laughs> Three, don't bother. Just you'll hate it. Just save your money and order Brian pizza. And and Betty. I think you, Betty should, some- you should order me pizza anyway, though. I mean, like, what, yeah. regardless of the game. Right? Yeah, yeah, I guess you should have pizza at your door like every day by now. I'm surprised you don't. It's pretty close. Betty, <laughs> Betty, how do you rate this game? Talk to me. Um, Do I have to rate it like Jeremy? I, I give it I, I, 1 through 10. I give it a, <laughs> a, a, a 7.75. 7.75. Only because... It, yeah, because we just need a little bit of that interactive in or in changes within each of those realms. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, in the what realm was it? Um, the the Golby Desert. There's actually a guy sitting up at the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did you guys ever notice that? I killed that guy. You know, what? Uh, no. Was oh, he really? <laughs> you yeah. killed him? Oh yeah, he was just sitting up there, and I was. Yeah, like, I thought he just looks like he's having lunch up yeah, there. Or I threw something. a sword at him. Yeah, he killed that motherfucker. Dead. Yep. I didn't know you could kill him. Oh yeah, it's my favorite. Did he fall? Ever. Oh yeah, he's he's no longer with oh, us. Oh, I'm gonna try that. So I get seven point seven five. That's how I rate it. Okay. <laughs> um. And wait for it to go on sale. Yeah, wait for it to go on sale. That sounds like a pretty solid two. Could, yeah. could Sounds like yeah. you could use some improvements and uh, maybe a sale. Um, mm-hmm. I'm 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 a little all over the place with this game because every time I play it I love it, um, but it does it does occasionally or maybe very frequently feel like a tech demo, where it's you know here we go like they they're really they're really going to town they are updating this game f- practically every single week based on uh, consumer feedback right on all the player feedback that they have and they have such a dedicated following that like that that are always always there with bug reports and and suggestions and whatever and. Knowing that the horde mode is something that people really enjoyed, they're bringing us 
more horde modes. Like they're, we're going to have a pirate horde mode soon. And oh, that, nice. that's cool, man. It's like, I can just keep building yeah. and building out this game. And so, you know, and with the cause boss battle, like it's, it's, it gives you a reason to jump in at a certain time. And I'm like, this is cool. This is really cool. Um, ultimately though, like it's going to appeal to a very specific type of person uh, because it's, it's kind of like going for realistic sword fighting. Like this isn't Swords of Gargantua. This isn't Until You Fall. Uh, yeah. This is, they're going for realistic, but it sometimes ventures into Gorn territory where it's a little goofy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, but, but again, I think if you, if you give a lot, if you get into it, the game gives a lot back. And, uh, and I, and I love seeing where they're taking this game. It seems very bare bones, very basic at the beginning. And now they just keep adding and adding and adding and adding. And I love rewarding developers that do that, um, with my money and, and my time. Uh, and so that's why this is a super, super strong two for me. Uh, I think this is so much fun. Uh, but it's also, I hate saying it, not quite there yet. Cause that's what people say about VR and it drives right. me it's, insane. It's, it's yeah. like, it's there almost. It's so close, yeah, man. Really it's so is. close. Uh, so I, I hope they keep plugging away at this now. Uh, so strong too, though. Strong too. It's a lot of fun. You get a lot of gameplay for your 20 bucks. Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's two. What's that? A two, a two a strong two for sure. Strong two. So what's my 7.75? Would that be a strong two, two? Sound like you pretty gave it a pretty decent two, a pretty solid two. Yeah. That's a solid okay. two. Yeah. Solid yeah. two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what um, do you think, Jeremy? So, you know, it, this, this type of game is not my type of game. I'm not an arena battle type of a person. Hmm. But as VR games have shown me, over the last stretch of time that they've been out is that games that didn't appeal to me prior, they're a lot more fun when you're actually playing them in VR. Yeah. So not liking this type of game on a flat screen, um, playing it in VR. At first I was like, nah, because I, I had no tactic. I had no finesse. I was just trying to just play a video game and just hack, 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 hack. Right. But this game, like you were saying, Bri, it is a bit more simulation than arcade in that defense you know in that side of things so um i couldn't treat it as an arcade game and just whack 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 i gotta like think and block and tack and do these things and start utilizing the system going back upgrading leveling up putting things into different you know and i like how they have the the slow motion and you know being able to, uh, to, to pick up the weapons from further away than you know you know because that's a whole other part of the game sometimes yeah, yeah. The weapons mm -hmm. can get knocked out of your hands and then all of a sudden you got to like grab one, you know, so we didn't even discuss that. And and they did put a lot of time into each weapon, the stats to each weapon, you know, certain levels that you need to be to yield them properly, you know, so they put some time into things like that. And then the armor and they're constantly coming out with the updates. Now they get the armor update where it actually physically defends, you know, right. and puts a whole new layer of challenge. So, you know, putting on all that into consideration, you know, but not overlooking the fact that the environments are stagnant, the enemies are pretty bland, um, you know, there's nothing going on in the environments to seem lively or like a, alive. It seems like an old, you know, PC gamer demo, you know, it, there was, there's just something about it that feels incomplete. Um, but it's not to say that it's not fun because I, I did have some fun. And the more I got into it, the more I was like, all right, come on, you prick. And then at other times, like when you were in the first. Few levels, There's that little. Yeah. Huh. You, you just walk right up to him and be like, whoa, and keep walking. Be like, yeah, you know, like Jesus fucking walked right through him and killed him. And then other times you're like, uh oh, and you're like, eh, and backing away. Mm -hmm. So with all that being said, this for me is a week two. You know, because I, I find that it's enjoyable, but it definitely is geared towards certain people that like to just do that rinse and repeat. And the load screens can be long enough so that rinse and repeat can be kind of annoying at times, you know, because you're like, all right, all right, he killed me. And then it's like, mm -hmm. you got to wait. And it's a, it's a good wait. So uh, a week two, uh, but uh, it's definitely an enjoyable one that. I'm curious to see. It's like the No Man's Sky of arena games because if they keep adding to it, what's this title going to be like next? You know, Valentine's Day when I jump right. in and get my 420 gold and my 69 experience. 
<laughs> might be a whole new game with all different word modes. You beautiful creature, you. <laughs> yeah. I, I like something that uh, I like something that Betty said earlier, and that was that like you know it makes you, it makes you feel like you want to like go talk to villagers and stuff like that kind of thing, like the things to do between uh, battles. And I and what I love is that this is so Gen One VR, right? This is like so it's like they, they they've they've basically got the combat down. Like if this was like the actual combat in a full fledged game, I'd be like, oh yeah. man, the combat's pretty good. I can parry, I can I can attack, I can defend, yeah. I can retreat, I can kick. You know, like there's all these different things you can do. Uh, but it was, but if it was part of a larger game where, you know, you're walking from town to town and you're talking to villagers and you're buying things from shops and you're going on like a, a full fledged adventure, as Jeremy was saying, like, you know, once we want the narrative part fleshed out a little bit more, Yeah. like, I, I feel like we've seen the narrative part from some games and we've seen the villages from some games. And now we've seen the combat from this game in like, yeah. hopefully next gen, like all these things can be fused together into like, right. A, a fully formed VR game that really like starts to compete RPG. with like Skyrim games. swordsman battle system, yep. you know, it, it would be mm -hmm. pretty good. Yes. Absolutely. And yeah. So we keep seeing that from all these games. They're doing every, all these games are doing pieces of the full formula really well. And now somebody's yeah. going to like merge all the pieces together and make like a full, fully realized game. Someday, Bri. Someday. 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 Damn hangnail. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Betty, thank you so much for joining us this week. Hey, uh, this was nice to have you. a different voice on the uh, on the show. We appreciate you being yeah. here. Absolute and, pleasure. And thank you. And happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, this was just to be festive for, for Valentine's Day, you know. <laughs> uh, Brian and I, I mean, always wear the same thing. I mean, if I'm not wearing this, it's some other type of a quick hoodie and Brian's just alternates the ties, so yeah, it's it's nice to have. I, I don't some... even alternate anymore. This is it, man. It's like I I just I just hang this up over there. I throw it over a chair over there, and then I just pick it up like once a week and throw it on, and then in two seconds I'm gonna take it off and throw it back on the chair over there. Right, I just go zip. These I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, happy Valentine's Day to you both. Yeah, yes. I'm glad, I'm glad we got to spend happy it together. Happy Valentine's Day. To all the cats yes, out there, I know. What is this? I'm the, I'm one of the luckiest girls. <laughs> <Kitty cat. laughs> For another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR, that's Jeremy King. That's Creeper Betty. My name is Brian Paul, and we'll see you next week. Psh.